Um, now from moving on to all the good talks, a little bit of gossip that we had as well, moving to your milestone moment. You scored a century in an ODI against Australia and of course the tour that we spoke some time back and India went on to win it. Tell me about that experience. How did it feel after a century? What were the conversations that you had with the captain every day? Well, I do remember the match. It was, I think, at the Pune Stadium. It was at the old Pune Stadium. Uh, I, I think we lost the toss and we were put into bat on a slightly sticky wicket. Uh, there was a bit of juice, uh, there was a bit of moisture in the, uh, the start of the morning. Uh, the ball did a bit. Uh, we lost about two, three wickets quite early. And uh, all I was thinking at that point in time was hang in there for about, about 10 odd overs, not to lose another wicket. I had Lakshman who was batting with me at that point in time uh, in a little in, a, in the course of the innings. I did lose Lakshman also, but the only mindset of mine at that point in time was to keep batting there, keep batting 10 overs. And then once I crossed the 10 over mark, I had kind of uh, seen the opposition, kind of got the feel of the wicket. And then I took it upon myself that, uh, you know what, most of the senior batsmen are back in the hut. Uh, Sachin was out, Saurav was out, Lakshman was out, Pravid was out. Uh, and I, I saw my, saw myself as the man anchoring the ship. I saw myself the person who would have to bat 40-45 overs. And as the innings progressed, I started to bat well. I was starting to get my shots, starting to play well, starting to pick the line. Uh, they had uh, Megra, they had uh, Fleming playing for them. They had Nathan back in the left armor, who was the one-day specialist playing for them. They had a good side. Uh, but I kind of got the hang of things. I kind of got the hang of the wicket and the bowlers and uh, eventually got to my uh, ODI 100. I mean, special feeling, no doubt, uh, Reena, because you've worked really hard, uh, toiled over the years. In fact, I toiled through that season itself, preparing myself to play the Australians, the mighty Australians, because I knew that was a hurdle if I could pass, that I could, I would be accepted as a good player. Not just a player who played for India, but somebody... There's always this benchmark that you always have in cricket, that if you can get runs against a certain side, you, have, you tend to be respected more. Like in the yesteryears, if you got runs against West Indies, you would always be respected a little more than the other players. So I always had the same thing with the, us playing Australia. And I always had this thing that I may score runs against any other side, but I have to score runs against Australia. So when I could, when I did that, it felt really good. And it's memorable that uh, I got to my 100. Um, a, a little sad that we couldn't finish up the game. We lost the game. Uh, the wicket eased off in the second half. But uh, nevertheless, uh, a personal milestone for me, no doubt. That moment, I'm sure, would be something that you would like to revisit in your mind again and again. But one such moment was... No, in not really, Reena, not really. I'm past uh, it now. I'm too old for that. I mean, it's, it's a good milestone. It's a good memory. But you know what? This was done, I think, wait, wait, this is 2001, about 20 years, 19 years back. Oh, oh, you know what? All I'm looking forward to right now, thinking for right now is... When can I get to the IPL commentary box and do some work? I <laughs> I really am not thinking about what's happened in 2001. Yes, it's in the history books. I can rewind it once in a while, but uh, I mean, you don't really keep thinking about those days. It, it You move on, you move on in life. Today we know your life revolves around the three C's. You're attached to commentary, you're attached to uh, cricket, you're attached to coaching. Tell us about the three C's that you revolve around. How's life around it? So, cricket uh, obviously was a choice. Uh, I, I loved it. Uh, commentary was not a choice, you'd be surprised. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was cut out for commentary. I thought I always was some... I, I'm, I'm, you might think that I, I do wear a nice jacket, a nice suit and a nice tie and all of that. But I'm actually more the shorts and t-shirt kind of guy. So, for me, that, is, that does not come naturally. Yes, I do make an effort to, to present myself very well. I understand that's the need of the hour, need of the job. But given a choice, I'm the happiest in a t-shirt and a pair of shorts. I, I'm more than happy in them, maybe a track pant, uh, just wear a flip-flop and go around like you're off to the beach or something. And hence, commentary was never my first option or never my choice to get into. Uh, it just happened by chance. Uh, cricket again by... Uh, uh, cricket was a choice. Uh, coaching was something which I thought I was cut out for. I thought I could coach well, I thought I had it in me with the right temperament. Maybe not the temperament of Himang Badali, the player, 10 years back. If you go and ask anyone who played with me, will tell you exactly how I was. Uh, I was I was tough on the field. I was uh, could, I could be abusive. I could be harsh on the field. I would pick up a fight to win. I would do anything to win the match. Basically, I would do anything to win the game. 
but the person that you see now over the years has mellowed down has been is a lot more calmer has a sense of humor which i had even then i had a sarcastic sense of humor then but it's a lot more different now and i'm far more uh, how do i put it uh, my temperament has changed if i could say that but uh, coming back to the sorry i missed you far more experienced in life I, I guess you tend to laugh at things. No, I tend to laugh at most things now than get angry. Even if there's something which is quite stupid, I just see the funnier side of it and I let it be. I don't really take it to heart. Uh, I think that change has come into me uh, primarily because I think uh, of what uh, we went through as a family a few years back. My wife had cancer. Uh, to her, for her to have come out of that, the journey that I had with her, that was that was a learning curve for me. I, it kind of told me there's more to life than just about being angry all the time and being in someone's face all the time. It's about enjoying the moment that you have, and I think that has probably gotten the change. But coming back to the uh, commentary bit, um, it was by choice. I'm sorry, it was just by chance. I was asked by uh, Sony then for uh, Tamil commentary. And uh, I was a little skeptical to, in the sense that I've always been skeptical of commentators who keep uh, uh, commenting about uh, my batting or someone else's batting, and I feel I found I found some of them very harsh. So I said, why do I want to put myself in the same seat and try and uh, speak ill of another player? But then I wasn't doing much. Sir. I had just retired then, and my dad said, you know what? Just give it a go. You don't have to be harsh. You, you can be different than the other commentators. You can probably just be a little more objective and not be harsh on the players, but you can still talk about cricket. It's something you like doing, something you've learned over the years, something you're good at. You speak well. Why don't you go and at least give it a go? I wouldn't. I wouldn't want you not wanting to give it a go and then later on feeling that maybe I should have given that a shot. Give it a shot. If it works out, fine. If it doesn't work out, you have other things to do later on. You can do them anyways. So that's how my commentary started. So I took that chance, and since then I'm loving it. I'm actually loving my commentary bit. Uh, coaching, anyways, as I said, is something which I liked doing. Playing the game was how my journey started. So yes, uh, Triple C is in my life all through and through. And I must say, so are your fans loving your commentary? We see so many tweets coming in on Twitter, especially they tag Star Sports Tamil and tell us, you know, about how good your commentary is. That's that's brilliant, and I think that's a, a step Thank up you. and another, you know, another experience that you're adding on to your life. But I want to dig deep into uh, the aggression bit here and speak about. <laughs> uh, yeah, the domestic cricket and the rivalry with Karnataka. How was it? Do, do you remember anyone being a dangerous batsman or a bowler? How was the rivalry between Chennai, especially Tamil Nadu and Karnataka teams? <laughs> oh boy, we used to fight cats and dogs. If I had to uh, speak about one side that I fought the most against, uh, without a doubt, hands down, was Karnataka. Each time, whether we played them at home, we played them away, we played them at their home, uh, there was always a fight at hand with someone or the other. There was always someone uh, sledging the other person. There was always there. You could you could sense the tension when you played another state. You knew that it would be a good game. You could uh, by, uh, go by quite peacefully. But when you knew that you're going to play Karnataka, be it at Chepal, be it at Chennai Stadium, or be it elsewhere. There was no chance you could go into the match thinking that this will be a peaceful game. There was never any peace in a Tamil Nadu Karnataka game. I used to have fights with Dodda Ganesh, uh, J. Arun Kumar, David Johnson, uh, my good friend Vijay Bharadwaj. Uh, but the good bit is we, we all knew at most times to draw the line. We did all of that on the field. We were uh, at times harsh to each other on the field, sledged each other on the field. But we never took it off the field. There were times when after the game was over, with the very same guys, I would go partying. They would take me out. Or if they were in Chennai, I would take them out for a meal or maybe for a drink. So it was it was a point where we knew that we don't cross this. We, we are doing our best for our state. We're doing our best to win the match. But we also knew that beyond the point, you know what, it's the game, it's a sport. We've tried doing everything on the field. We've given it all on the field. But off the field, we've shared some great memories, some great times. And some of these guys, till date, are my very good friends. I think 
friendship is what we have got in hands to move ahead and those are the wonderful memories like you know if you would like to go back and think about it you already mentioned it's too too you know too many years back but uh, i think memories is all that we can bank on and hold on to life